Well, fall is here and the temperatures are changing. Unfortunately, they're not inside the Stagia. Boys and girls, welcome back. First, let me address the fact that it has been a couple months since the last time we were together. Quite frankly, not much has changed. I've been playing Good Samaritan and I've been loaning out the hoopty to people that are in need. Had a friend that had car problems, then their second car started having problems, so loaned out the Jazz. He had the Jazz for quite a long time. Long story short, I wasn't gonna do any significant work on the Stagia. And unfortunately, during those couple months, the weather was amazing, but I just was not able to take advantage of it the way I wanted to. Now, here we are, guys, like a light switch, the weather has changed. It's cold, it's rainy. It happens to be nice today, and that's why we are taking advantage. Oh, and the jazz, the jazz I got running. We talked uh, talked about hesitation. Let me show you what the problem was. So once I fixed enough issues that it would finally start throwing a new code, it started throwing the EGR valve as a code. Crusty, disgusting monstrosity. Yeah, I bought a new EGR valve. Cost me about 50 bucks. And the car runs freaking perfect now. Like, absolutely perfect, 100%. Number two, another thing that has changed. Look at this. It is a new shop. Guys, we moved into a new shop. I talked to the landlord. I said, hey, there's a storage unit downstairs designated for this other apartment. It's been vacant for over a year. Do you mind if I switch and move into it? And they were like, yeah, sure, no problem. This thing is double the size. All the storage on that side, all the shop on this side just a week ago somebody moved into that apartment man i'm telling you just in the nick of time i'm freaking super stoked man it, it's been great man it's been really great so going back to the hook i put on the front of this video i have noticed now since the temperature has started changing that the stagia it's not changing the the climate control is not working i can't increase the heat i can't change the vents like nothing is responding to the thing the only thing that changes is the fan speed otherwise i just have cold air blowing in my face from the regular vents and uh, yeah, that's no bueno because it's starting to get cold here. As you can see, I've already taken out the dash and with that, a bunch of other trim parts. And as our Australian friends would say, this stuff is completely grot. We are going to completely refurbish and clean out all the vents, all the ducting and restore and refurbish the heater core and all that stuff while we're at it. Update on a story I told last time we were together about the airbag light. I told you the next time I'm taking everything out, I'm inspecting and when I pulled the gauges out, first thing I noticed was this plastic here is cracked and it shouldn't be. Guys, do you see what I see? Freaking tape. Freaking tape. Like, are you serious, dude? I was in the dude's shop when he bought this off of eBay. We needed to replace the one that was all fried and jacked up. There's no way it would have already come with tape on it, guys. Intentionally took this apart, taped up the airbag light. I I'm, I'm half tempted to launch a social media assault on this freaking place. Don't, don't deal with these people. Don't. <laughs> Just... Anyway, I am gonna go ahead and try to transplant the odometer, the original odometer, because there's a weird thing with this one. When the car is cold, the uh, LED screen gets all like matrixy and pixelated and weird and like the numbers aren't working. So I'm gonna try and swap it over. We're gonna see if it works. As it stands right now, the car still runs and drives. It's no problem, but it is considerably stripped apart. So without any further ado, let's go out and check it out. So much of the car is torn apart at the moment. Upon initial inspection and fiddle faddling with the climate control, I could not see any reason why the door flappy thingy, whatchamabob, why those aren't working, I don't know. But either way, there is so much disgusting dust and grime and rustiness and just, just gross. I'm sure the blower is probably gross. I'm sure the heater core is gross. If I'm gonna be changing out the radiator, the water pump, I might as well change out the heater core too. Let's just drain it all and start fresh and put in some good stuff. We're gonna start from scratch. I'm back out here. I did take the control module out of the center piece. Just looking everything over and just trying to memorize where stuff is at, as well as taking pictures. Also just looking for any obvious damage. And um, while I was inspecting this area here, I found this random brown plug 
laying right here and I don't recall ever disconnecting that plug. I see this little thing right here. Looks like it's a servo or something attached to uh, the blower motor, this vent door here. I'm gonna try reconnecting that as well as hooking up the sun sensor and uh, the light, you know, some there are some other sensors that are up here in the cowling. If that fixes it, that's gonna be an automatic win. We're not gonna undo what we're doing, but at least we'll know that the control module isn't bad and that everything is good. So good news and bad news. I just connected everything up and I pushed the difference between inside and outside air. The servo did start working and it's obvious that the arm is not corrected connectly. It's not connected correctly and the servo arm looks like it's trying to go the wrong direction. I'm gonna pull this out and see what's going on. The door is closing. So at least now we have the recirc and fresh air working. That is freaking super awesome, super fine. But again, if I switch the modes here and just try to put it on the floor, it continues to come out here and the servos on this unit are still not working. Also, the air conditioning does not work if I turn it on. However, there's a way to jump that and to get it working. The air conditioning circuit itself is kind of a weird one. It actually talks to the ECU to get permission to have the air conditioning come on. When I first got this car, the uh, the actual wire here for the AC compressor was disconnected. And once I reconnected that, it still didn't do anything. You adjust it on the climate control unit, it reads a bunch of sensors, it sends a signal to the ECU, and then the ECU says, yeah, sure, go ahead and turn on the air conditioning. You could bypass that just to at least test the system by going here, if you pull this relay here and you jump the power input output, you can actually kick on the clutch of the compressor, which I have. So I know that that is working and it's working fine. It's not giving me any crazy noises or anything like that. Now we know that the problem is the signal from wherever to here to tell this relay to close is the problem. That's what I gotta continue to troubleshoot, but we're not worried about air conditioning at this point. We just want the heat going where we need to go, specifically the defrost. So a little bit of time has passed because my camera died and I just, I needed to recharge it. I figured I'd just keep driving on with good things and the tedious stuff. I got good news and I got bad news. I took the time to take the gauge apart and swap it out with the other one, essentially bringing the old odometer into the new cluster. I got it all swapped out. Everything went haywire. Just the way it kind of was before, the tachometer was bouncing, the hot cold went totally hot, the fuel tank went totally full. Something in this is probably fried. So unfortunately, I had to go back to the old cluster. It, the speedometer's not working now. I, I don't know. The speedometer is not working now. Everything else normaled out. So when I put the old board back in, or the original board, the new board, the new board, yeah. Uh, so everything's working now. The tachometer and all that stuff is working and I definitely have an airbag fault because there's an airbag sitting in that dash that's not in the car. So the car's freaking out about that. But for whatever reason, the speedometer doesn't work now. So I don't know what the deal is. This is what I was afraid of in the first place. The needle getting out of calibration. And that's probably what just happened. So that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't know, man. I'm not, damn it. <laughs> but some, that's what happens when you're your own mechanic, right? Good morning, everybody. It's a new day and we are back at it. I actually concluded this video yesterday kind of on a little bit of a sour note, but I did some critical thinking last night, a couple other tests and trials, and I found some information that I think is worthwhile and sharing, and it's gonna help us continue to move forward. Some of you guys have probably been telling me all along to perform a diagnostic on the climate control unit. When it comes to the Stagia, there's not a lot of information on how to do it, but it just so happens to be almost exactly like the Skyline and the codes of the same. First thing you got to do is hold the off button within 10 seconds of turning the car on and boom. Now it's supposed to go into this mode here, which is just kind of a light test and display test. According to the stuff online for the Skyline, you hit the heat button, but we don't have a button. We have a knob. I've tried to do this before and all I get is the number two and the number three and the number 41 
and it doesn't mean anything because there is no number two and number three on the diagnostics code. I've tried to search, I've tried to figure it out, like what am I not doing right? Why am I not getting what I'm supposed to get? And it came to me, guys, I have to turn it to the number two and just leave it alone. And then it starts to run through the modes and do all the tests. If I change this to the number two, it's in the two series of diagnostics, which is checking all the different sensors and it's flashing 25. 25 is this light sensor and apparently it's normally false out because it just requires super, super bright light on it for whatever reason. Now, if I change it to the next one, which is the three, now the 30 series of diagnostics actually goes through and checks all the different servos in the car it'll check the servo that's up here and the two servos that are on the box here and this is where i started getting all my faults as it sits in that mode it runs through all the different servos and tries to make them go one way or the other and i could see this one up here that was moving and it was doing its thing and then actually the one in the back started doing things but the one right here would not do anything it wouldn't move it wouldn't do anything and then all of a sudden i got a fault i think it was a 32 33 35 essentially i got all the faults that are associated with that one in all the the various positions that it can take i started looking at it a little bit closer and i realized that the plug is the exact same as the one that's up here so here is the servo from that side i pulled it out and i connected it to the connection here and ran the diags again and guys this servo actually started working things started moving and it started going through the diagnostic modes and all these things were happening and all that good stuff. That's a super positive thing because it tells me now the climate control is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Something's wrong with that servo there. I'm going to pull that servo out, see if maybe it came off its tracks or if it's bound up or something of that nature. If I could pull it off and get it to move, then we know the servo is good. If not, then we can replace the servo. All right, I have now pulled the crossbar out of the front and gained complete and total access to this and access to a lot of other things, which I think quite frankly, before this project is over, we are going to install the clutch pedal and the new brake pedal for the manual conversion. There is some cold wind and some nasty clouds rolling in. We are gonna get sunset on our time outside, but I've got the servo off and look guys, if I turn this, like all the flaps, everything moves exactly like it's supposed to. Now we are in the 30 diag mode. Oh. Okay, that one's moving, and that one didn't do anything, and here we go. Here's all our codes. Let's try to reverse the two servos and see if we can clear all those other codes and just get a 31. So it's working over on this side. This one still hasn't done anything. So we know the servo is bad. Okay. So I think that is going to be it for today, guys. I mean, we really actually got to the bottom of the problem, which is super freaking awesome and super fine this is a step forward in a lot of other things disinfecting and cleaning all this stuff and now we have total access to just get the pedals knocked out while we're in here complete overhaul time i still haven't even cracked open the ac system or gotten rid of all the coolant so i got a lot of homework to do it looks like i got right where i needed to be because the rain is starting to sprinkle in that said i'm gonna take my time and make sure that i do everything right and until next time ciao a tutti and aloha Bye-bye.